Welcome to the best course on how to build great command line applications in Go. It has everything that you need to build fantastic command line applications in Go. We are going to start with the simple but powerful ideas like how to control your outputs to make testing easier, accepting and processing input, handling signals, what happens when someone or something forces your program to exit, learn how to handle command line arguments and flags, build great programs that mix API calls with testing, you will learn how to pipe the output of one program into your own program as an input, learn how to run other programs from your program and finally we provide a rich interface to our program. Each video is short and dedicated to a single concept at a time. You can speed up the playback if you think it is too slow. Remember to support the channel by hitting the subscribe button. Have you done that? Thank you. Now, let's jump into it. Before we start building our application, let's look at the setup. I will be using Go 1.2.1. One. If you like, you can use the latest version of Go. There's no problem. Everything is going to work. And my emoji is going to simply be um, github.com slash geofuzzy and slash it. So this is where you are going to find the code on github. All right. The next section, which is the first section of the tutorial, we are going to start with the basics. So I'm going to call it, um, let's call it sec1. And then let's create a main program there. And this is a classic main function. There is nothing inside. All right. Command line programs, usually you have to run them on the command line, right? Using the terminal. So I'm going to start, I'm going to switch to bash. So you want to run the program. So we are going to type go run sec one so this is going to run this package fantastic at the moment there is nothing inside so let's go ahead and print something then i run the program again hello and as you can see we see hello here so far so good the first thing i want to show you is how we can manage the output so when we print something to the screen, when you use this formed print LN or what formed print whatever, we are printing to the standard output, which is OS, so that object is OS.std out. So what I want to show you, the first thing I want to show you is because testing command line applications can be tricky. Most people actually try to dodge that, but I'm going to show you that it is really, really easy to test your command line applications if you follow these simple principles, just managing the output. So how do you control where you print? Let's start by creating a greeting function. Let's say name. All right. And then I'm going to say do this. Hello. We can put something here, then John or Jane. Let's run the program. You see, hello, John. Maybe we can remove this space. We have hello, John, right? No surprises. But how do you test this? This is what we need to find out. How do you test this? Okay. There are several ways which you can test this program. But in order to test this, we have to refactor the code a little bit. So let's start by creating a main, uh, a main underscore test. And I'm going to expand the code a little bit. Yeah, this is better. So we want to test this function and then we can do func test. Greeting, we take a pointer to honestly, it should be easy to say uh, 
let's say the greeting should call greetings there by greeting here and you say john because the data is going to be printed i can run the test like this look at it say passed but we have not tested anything right so let's do it at the same time you see john is printed we don't want john to print we want to test this function two i'm going to show you two different approaches to do the testing so the first one because we know that the println is printed to printing to standard output we can change it a little bit standard output is managed by uh, it implements the io writer interface so that means we can come here and say out io.writer name name and instead of this we can change this a little bit to say f print f or something like that we give it out and we can say hello all right if there are no errors good that means we can come here and do os.std out and our code is still up this is it's still working the same behavior nothing special yet except that we have now changed where we are printing that means we can control it so with these changes let's go and write the test now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a buffer okay this gives us a buffer right then the name of the name we want to print let's use jump don't. then greeting we pass it the buffer then the name we want to print bytes.buffer also implements the io writer interface so we're able to do this right after this what we expect expected we expect um hello comma john and the new line so here we can do our check if expected we can check the string we got in the buffer now So instead of me doing uh, we can say got let's copy cop this and put here so we don't call that twice okay now we can run the test boom our test is green we can test that by changing the code you know let's remove the space for instance and we can run our test again and our test just failed so this is good we are we have been able to test this this is one strategy i promise to show you another one again this is really important when you are building command line applications so don't be in a hurry please just stick with me i'm going to show you another one even more important now let's assume that based on requirements you are not allowed to do this right so what we are going to do let's copy and paste this so i'll call it 1b and then i'm going to come here take out this we go back to exactly what it was comma and the name This is how we started, you know. This is still going to work. Good code. All right. Hello, John. That's exact. This is how we started. Okay. Sometimes I use this um, IDE to run the code. Sometimes I, sometimes I use the terminal. So please bear with me. The same behavior. All right. Now, how do we test this? We can still test this. So let me show you how. 
because we know that this is printing to standard output, we can, we can change it. We can hijack the standard output. So I'm going to change the test here a little bit. Let's start with something. Let's say this is the original STD out. Let's save it into, okay? So this is the original one. We are storing it into this temporary, all right? The next is, let's something that is not commonly used. We have a reader and a writer joined together there. It's like a pipe. So you can, when you write something to it, you can read from it. So it's a pipe. So I'm going to see where is the pipe. Of course, we have to check for error. This is a good place to filter the, uh, the test because if error is not needed, there's nothing else you can do, right? So with this, what we need to do here is to say, oh, OS.std out is now equal to W. Okay, that means we have sort of hijacked the standard output. When you print something now, instead of it going to the screen, it goes into this hour. Uh, we are able to read it using this connected reader. This is a trick that you can use to sort of hijack that string that our greeting function is going to print. After that, we can safely call our greeting. We don't need a buffer anymore. Our expected can be the same, you know. The got. Now, before, immediately after this, I want to do two things very important. I'm going to close. I'm going to close the writer. And at the same time, we need to set it back to OSTD and back to the original one. This is it. Remember, we've, we just sort of hijacked it here. We've written something to it at this point. That means this now has our data. We can read the data from this. This is more like the, um, you can use IO.read or now to read from here. Then we have to set this. We, if you don't set this as it is, some, the code is not going to work, trust me. I'm going to show you shortly. After that, of course, we can read from it now. Byte slice error io.readall from r we can check for error one more time now we have the bytes we can just turn it into a string here and that's it let's run the code you see our test passed so let me expand it and show you just a little bit of recap we started by storing the std out temporary somewhere we use the pipe to acquire a reader and a writer then we set the original std out to our own writer which is they are just files basically you know then we we executed the greeting, we closed the writer, set back the STD out, and then the rest of it are just straightforward. Now, let me show you what is going to happen. Let's say we comment this thing out. And the code is going to run for a long time, so I need a way to... So I run it. You see, the code is not going to stop because it, it never closes and there is no way for within signal that we are done. So closing actually is very important. So that is one. Two, let me print something to the screen here. Done. And um, so we need to enable this back. Let's run the test. You see, we ran the test and look at the done was printed out, right? Now, let's assume we forgot to set this. Okay. And then we run the test. You see, the test it passed, but nothing else was printed. That, be, that is because STD out is still not set, it's still set to this our own writer, which you know we are no longer using. So it's very important 
uh, without you, if, if you don't perform these two lines, the program state is going to be somehow. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. The next section, we are going to look at how to handle signals. That is when someone press like Control C to um, exit the program or when they issue the kill command from the terminal, how do we react in that case? So that is what we are going to handle next. Thank you for watching.